Hi everyone, it's Peter Zellum's Greeny Flicks at Vetrate and welcome to another video. And typical, as soon as I want to record, there's a plane going overhead. Uh, bye bye. So that means I've got three minutes now before the next plane takes off. Anyway, uh, Sydney, in Sydney, in the parklands, not far from home, and I'm trying something new. Yes, it's a new form of photography. New form for me, anyway. Black and white photography. It's a Nikon D800. But what's unusual about this is that it's been converted to infrared photography. Now the good thing about trying something completely new is that you have to educate yourself every step of the way. And uh, the great thing about having a YouTube channel is that I can share this experience with you so that uh, we could all be educated at the same time. Have you ever been interested in black and white photography? Have you ever been interested in infrared photography? Well, I've known about it since my early days in photography, in film photography, but it was you know, such a specialized area, but it was always interesting results you could create with it. It's time for me to explore infrared photography and I've picked up myself a camera. Yes, it's a second-hand camera. It's a Nikon D800 and it's been converted to be able to do monochrome infrared photography. So the first thing you need to do with infrared photography is find yourself a camera. And I did look at a, a number of cameras, like literally search the web, the internet, whatever. Numerous that are available second-hand. And you can go for small compact cameras, you can go for uh, cameras, uh, single lens reflex, mirrorless cameras, all sorts of cameras. So what I was looking for ideally was a full frame, 35 millimeter. And I wanted hopefully Nikon so that I could use some of my old Nikon lenses that I have. So a DSLR. And the only one that sort of came up at the time that I was looking was this Nikon D800. So I'm in Australia, this was for sale in the States. And uh, the only reference I really only had was, um, yes, you know, from the description, it was uh, modified by a reputable photographer or a photographic firm that uh, modified cameras. So I was hoping that it would be working. Yes, it arrived only about a week ago, so I've been out taking a few shots and I'll take some shots today as well and share some of these experiences, these initial experiences with you when i was looking i did notice that uh, there are two types well two main groups of infrared photography and i will try and give you a bit of a chart so you can see where things are but basically photography is working around visible light and that's visible light has a certain spectrum from ultraviolet to almost infrared or so deep purples to deep reds and then everything in between is the rainbow and that's the thing you see so most so photography is all about that and over the years I've had all my training all my understanding and experience uh, around visible light so as soon as you start dealing with infrared light which is in this another spectrum of light it it starts to create different things happening infrared means that it's coming from a source uh, that can emit infrared, usually that's the sun or other lights, and that bounces off things. And to understand how it's going to sort of come back into the sensor is it bounces off trees, it bounces off leaves, it bounces off the grass, whether it's reflective, whether it's matte, and that's going to change the intensity of that reflection and therefore either will create a dark image or a light image. So the whole thing changes as far as what you take, what you compose, and the type of results that you get. So basically starting from scratch with photography, with a new form of light. So when you're buying your secondhand infrared camera, it will be advertised as either being a full spectrum infrared, which means that the, it's going to be visible light as well as infrared light. Normally the digital cameras that are just built for visible light have a filter to block out infrared. 
whereas a camera that's been converted to be visible light and infrared lets the infrared light through as well as a visible light. So you've got a choice of either doing that, so a camera that has visible light with infrared or a camera that only does infrared. So this one only does, this has been modified to do only infrared. If you go for a camera that can do visible light with infrared, it means then you can apply additional filters to the lens that you're using on that camera, which then only lets through a certain wavelength or longer. So you can put on an infrared filter that's 720 nanometers, and anything below, anything shorter wavelengths, which is the visible light, gets blocked out. So that gives you more flexibility as far as mixing infrared and visible light. Or you go to the other extreme, which is what I've done, and that just basically block out all visible light, and it's only infrared light, 930 nanometers or longer, heading towards radio waves, that this filter on the sensor will let through for the sensor to process, to give me an image. <sighs> okay, that's a quick introduction to infrared photography. The next task is to take some photographs and let's see what sort of results we can get. But uh, before we do that, one thing I did notice was how does the camera and its automatic sensors actually interact with this new form of light, this infrared light? And there are some things, most things are operating normally. The metering does work and what I'm finding is I have to adjust the metering to be one stop or two stops higher so that I get a good image. The autofocus does work with a proviso. Sometimes, yeah, the, sometimes the autofocus doesn't quite work. One of the benefits of this camera is that it's got live view. So if you're not sure whether you're actually nailing the focus or not, you can actually go in live view. Go in live view. And then you can uh, zoom into your subject. I'm trying to photograph this. And what's happening is the infrared light is actually bouncing off this black motorcycle outline, as well as the gray and, and the white. And the whole lot is appearing white in infrared. Um, <laughs> I'm finding it hard to focus. <laughs> Tell you what I do. Um, this is going black, so I might just focus on that. And if I can get that in focus, then hopefully everything else will be in focus. And it's taking a shot. Do I have it in focus? I do. So I'll be able to show that to you. <laughs> Literally, I'm learning photography from scratch. Get your focus right. Uh, understand how light falls onto the subject. Understand how it reflects. Understand how it goes into the sensor. And then understand how you can post-process it and get your composition right and everything else. All right. Well, one advantage of having live view on your camera and also if your camera's got video is that you can actually film in infrared. So let's have a go at that. I've set the exposure already because I did some trials there. I'll put it on live view and uh, yep, I've got an image and I'll set the exposure, at, uh, set the focus at 0.6 meters, which I know, which is about like this just about like that and uh, I'll start filming uh, I've done the exposure already so it should be okay but I've let's, let's do this let's do this okay hello <laughs> at least I've got the audio from the GoPro so that, that should be a bit better because I don't think the, the audio on the uh, D800 is very good and be affected by wind and no doubt but how's that um, We'll get the sun in it as well and I just keep on moving around with different views how weird is that eh how weird is that all right I think I'm getting dizzy that should be about right I think bring the two cameras together and I'll continue yeah so the foliage in the trees is really interesting so you can either get some wonderful reflections of infrared off that or it's in the dark which makes a really interesting contrast what i have noticed is some of the runners here dressed in black 
um, appear completely white because that infrared has been reflected off their black clothing. Really quite amazing. All right, I think people are starting to look weird at me. <laughs> Saying what the hell's going on, <laughs> holding two cameras. Okay, let's uh, get back to the bike and continue to photograph. There'll be, I've, I'll, ta I'll show a few photographs taking over a few days and uh, see what sort of results I can get. Well, that's enough of tuition. Um, I'll show you some results. And uh, this is my first effort in infrared photography. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, comment, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed the photos um, are you tempted to go into infrared photography would you go for full spectrum with infrared and use filters or would you go for the monochrome version just do infrared only dedicated I welcome your thoughts uh, if you like the video then give it a thumbs up that's how you support the channel really appreciate it and if it's the first time to my channel then please do subscribe press notifications you will be notified when the next video is out and there'll be a few coming out of course i try and publish every two videos a week uh, mostly well it's always around photography but depending on what i'm doing whether i'm going for a bike ride like i am today or whether i'm actually doing a tour around central australia there will always be photography and uh, hopefully you can enjoy what i produce for you anyway thanks again for watching i look forward to seeing you on the next video cheers bye